Okay, so now that we can summon a menu wherever we want with whatever contents and functions we want, let's use it with our characters. To do that, we're going to compile all of the possible menu options for a character when it becomes their turn and it is time to select an action. Firstly though, we're going to add another action that relies on a submenu so we can see them working. So we'll pop over to our game data script and I'm going to add the ice spell to the game. It's very similar to our basic attack action, it just deals damage to a target, but we'll go over the key differences. Instead of minus one for submenu, we have the word magic. This means this action belongs to the magic submenu and isn't a top level action the way attack is. We'll have to go to a submenu called magic to find this action. We have an MP cost, though this isn't actually leveraged yet, we'll add that kind of thing later. The user animation is cast. I only actually made this animation for Questy, but remember if an animation isn't defined for the unit using an action, it will just not animate. It will still be able to use the action, it just won't look very good. We also use a different effect sprite, and this time the function deals a simple random amount of damage rather than involving any statistics. Again, we'll deal with MP costs another day. Now we also need to finally give some actions to our party members. Right now their actions data is just a blank array. For Lulu we'll add the attack action, and for Questy we'll add the attack and ice actions. A reminder that we're only covering the battle system itself, how you want to manage your character data and decide who can do what actions is up to you. But you need to have that data available so that the battle system can make use of it. Now we have some actions to select, let's go about creating our menus. In O Battle State Machine we're going to be doing a lot of work in Battle State Select Action. We're going to ramp the whole state in a check for the existence of O Menu, because if O Menu exists then we're waiting on input from the player before continuing. The menu object basically takes over this state until an action is selected. Then we're going to completely replace this section where our party members perform a simple auto attack. Instead what we do with a player controlled unit is generate a menu to pick an action from. So first we have to get the data we need for that menu. I'll define some local vars, menu options will be a blank array and submenus will be a blank struct. Eventually submenus will become an array of options that we merge with our top level options. Until that point, being a struct makes it a bit easier to gather and arrange our submenus. Next we'll get our action list with var action list equals unit actions. Then we'll start a for loop where we iterate over that array of actions. We'll also put the current action into a new local var. When we add MP costs we'll need to know if an action is currently available, but for now we can assume all actions in our menu are available, so we'll assign available to be true. When we add items as actions, like potions and so on, we'll need to know how many of an action we can perform. We'll mix the count with the name to form one string, so potion x4 etc. We'll put that into a var called name and count, but for now that can just equal the action name. If this action has a submenu of negative one, then it's a top level action like attack. So we add it directly to our menu options array with array push. Remember each menu option is itself an array. We need the option name, which is name and count, the function to be called, which is menu select action, which we'll write at the end of the episode, it's very simple for now, don't worry. This function will just begin the action we pass it for now. Later we'll use it to enter the targeting state for picking targets for actions. Then we need to add any arguments the function needs, which is another array. Menu select action will need the unit doing the action and the action itself. And lastly we add whether or not the option is available, which as we said, for now is always true. If this action is part of a submenu, we need to either create that submenu or add it to a submenu created earlier. So we'll check our submenu struct to see if this submenu is undefined. This dollar symbol lets us look for a struct entry with a string rather than directly. If there is no submenu with this name yet, we'll create it by using variable struct set on submenus, creating a value with the name of the submenu and adding an array. We'll also add this action to the submenu by adding the same array of data, including the action name, menu select action, etc. If the submenu does already exist, then we just add this option to that submenu, the same way we add options to the top level menu. Finally, we need to convert our submenu struct into an array and add its contents to our top level menu. We can get all of our submenu names by using variable struct get names. This creates an array containing the names of each struct member. Then we'll go over this array with a for loop. At some point you might want to sort the submenu so the options appear in a particular order. We'll also want to do this with our top level menu at some point. You'd probably do that here as this is where you finish compiling the submenus. But for now we want to add the back option onto the end of each submenu to give you a way to back out of the submenu rather than just the escape key. So we'll do array push and add this option to each submenu. The option is named back, uses the menu go back function, no arguments and always available. Then we just add the submenu itself to our top level menu. Again, we use array push to add an entry to menu options. 
containing a new menu option made up of the name of the submenu in submenus array i, the submenu function, the argument being the submenu data itself and all of its options, and available being true. Finally, we have everything we need in menu options, so now we just call the menu. We call menu at x plus 10, y plus 110, menu options, no description, 74 width and 64 height. These are obviously hard-coded magic numbers, use whatever works for you. It needs to be relative to the battle itself, though remember, this is all happening inside your field room. Now before we forget, we have one last thing to do, and that's add the menu select action function. We'll go to menu functions and at the bottom write function menu select action with the arguments user and action. As I said earlier, this function will later be more complicated and we'll set up the targeting for actions that need it. So in order to do that, we'll do with o menu active equals false in order to hide the menu without destroying it. This is in case we decide to return to the menu instead of committing to a target. But for now this isn't too relevant because we'll just begin our action immediately by doing with o battle begin action user action user. I think we've done enough in this episode to worry about even picking a random target again here so we'll go back to just providing the user as the target for the action. And so punching ourselves in the face once again since after all we'll be going over proper targeting very soon. Then once we've begun the action you might remember that will send us to the perform action state. We don't want the menu anymore so we'll destroy it and that's it so if we run the game and get into a fight once it becomes a player unit's turn they'll get a menu again it's a tough episode so don't worry if something goes wrong just be patient and work through everything one thing at a time you should notice that questy has a magic sub menu with the ice spell and that selecting an action has the unit perform that action although always aimed at themselves for now Targeting will be coming up next, I think, so we're almost through the trickiest stuff in the series. Source code is available through description links, etc. if you want it. Congratulations on making it this far. I hope you're enjoying it. Thank you to my patrons for funding the series, and thank you for watching till the end. I'll catch you all next time.